Hello everyone, this is Kyle Morton from Team Georgia Marketplace and welcome to the TCSG uh, PCARD Reconciliation and Approval uh, webinar. Wanted to uh, start off today, just I'll cover a couple of uh, administrative things. Uh, this webinar is being recorded, so it will record um, all the screen captures and as I speak through this, and I will make this link available to um, hopefully by um, end of day tomorrow to make this webinar available to anyone in your organization that was unable to watch this live. Also, as we go through the, as I go through the webinar, uh, feel free to um, to enter in questions. And your questions, um, you should have a screen on your GoToWebinar where you can enter in questions, and I will go through those questions if I've not covered them in the webinar, or if I need to do any additional uh, clarification of what I've talked about. So um, hopefully um, you guys have taken the online training class for PCARD reconciliation and approval. If you have not done that, uh, you should uh, get signed up for that. You can contact your procurement department and they can get you set up in what's called the LMS to go in and take the PCARD reconciliation and approval uh, online class. Also, I wanted to go through and I uh, wanted to show you where you can find the quick reference guides for PCARD reconciliation and approval on the DOAS website. So I'm going to go to doas.ga.gov. And once you get to the DOAS website, underneath Team Georgia Marketplace, you'll click on the Learn More or the Shopping Cart. From the Team Georgia Marketplace site, you'll click underneath Information Resources and How To on the State and Local Entities, click here. And from there, you'll see a section called Team Georgia Marketplace Training Materials, the Quick Reference Guides. So if you click on this link, it will launch a PDF which has all of the Team Georgia Marketplace Quick Reference Guides. The P card Reconciliation and Approval uh, quick reference guides are underneath the P-Card guide section. And for example, if you're a reconciler, if you're a card holder, and you're going to be uh, attaching receipts to your transactions and uh, potentially coding those against the budget, then you'll, you'll want to click on the Reconcile P-Card transaction and print out a copy of that so that, you can, that you'll have that on, uh, handy for when you're doing your uh, reconciliation. Um, this is one of those processes where once you go through it a, a couple times, you pretty much will um, be able to learn it uh, pretty well. We currently have over, uh, over 5,500 P-Card reconcilers and approvers in Team Georgia Marketplace using the system right now. So go ahead and uh, when you get back to your desk, make sure you click out, uh, you go ahead and print out this quick reference guide. And that's basically one of the, the first things that we'll walk through is um, how to do reconciling a transaction this morning. So you should have already received, uh, I'm going to be in a test environment, but you should have received a, um, a user ID and password, of course, to get into Team Georgia Marketplace or just get into the, the PeopleSoft environment. And one of the first things that you're going to, to do is um, you're going to add a pagelet to your home page, which is basically a report that runs each time you log in that shows you a list of your transactions that are, are there ready for you. And I'm, right now I'm speaking to people that are reconcilers or cardholders or people that are going to be doing reconciliation on other cardholders' um, P-card transactions. So when transactions come into the system, when they're loaded in, um, so we load a file every morning about uh, 9 o'clock it gets into the system. Uh, it comes from the bank, and it should be all of the transactions that posted to the bank uh, the previous day. And those transactions are loaded into PeopleSoft or Team Georgia Marketplace. And so the transactions that you have sitting out waiting on you uh, as a reconciler to set from stage to verified or, and to add attachments to are, um, are going to show up on this pagelet or this report that will run on your home page every time you log in. So to add the, the pagelet to your home page, you'll click on content, 
in the top left-hand corner. And you'll see underneath the TGMP pagelets, you'll see a pagelet called PCARD stage charges. And if you're an approver, you'll have a pagelet called PCARD verified charges. And I'm, I'm going to right now just put the PCARD stage charges on uh, on my home page. So you just select it. And then you click on the personalized layout. And you'll notice that uh, when you first log in, you might have two columns. So the left column of your home page has got your menu options and the right column is the news and announcements that automatically comes up. I like to add a third column for my pagelet. So by clicking on the radio button to add a third column and then you take that pagelet from the left column, the PCARD stage charges, and you move, use the arrows to move it first to the center column and then to the right column. And then you just click on save. And what you'll notice that what comes up on your home page is a list of all of the, the transactions for where your reconciler, um, the, where the, the cardholder um, will come up with all of the current charges that are out there that are ready to be reconciled. And so as you work or, or as you set these charges from stage to verified, they'll come off of your pagelet and they'll be, um, then they'll move to the PCARD verified charges page list so that your approver can approve the transactions. So that's how you'll add your page list and see your list of, uh, of charges that are waiting for you that are currently in a stage status. So once you have transactions that are out there for you to reconcile, you can click, you'll click on in the menu navigation e-procurement. Procurement Card Center, and then underneath Reconcile, you'll click on Reconcile Statement. Now this page works, once you click on that Reconcile Statement, this page works a little differently for, for uh, different people. So if you're a card holder and you click on that Reconcile Statement, your charges might come up automatically. But if you're someone that's reconciling for multiple cards or if you're an approver for multiple cards, this reconcile statement search page will come up. And I'll show you just in a, uh, in a minute once I pull up uh, the charges how if you're a card holder and you want to narrow down your list of transactions that you want to work on, um, how, how, to, how to get back to this search page. So if I am on this page and I want and I know I'm, I'm going to reconcile some charges, couple things I can do here. I can do a lookup uh, of the employee ID. So you'll just see just the, the employee IDs cards that you have access to reconcile. Or you can type in the, uh, the reconciler's uh, employee ID. Or you can also do a name lookup as well. And let's say that I wanted to narrow down this list of charges to just the ones for the current statement. So I'm going to pull up, and again, I'm in a test environment. and all of TCSG's uh, statements end on the 27th of the month. So the transactions that I want to reconcile right now are the December 27th transactions. So I'll choose a card issuer, a visa, and then I can put in a billing date, which is your statement date. In, in PeopleSoft, it's called the billing date of 12-27-2012. And I just want to see transactions that are currently in a stage status. And then I click on search. So that basically will bring up a list of transactions that are for that particular employee. And again, I could have used a n number of those fields on that page to narrow it down by the name. But again, you'll only see transactions that, uh, that where you have access to do reconciliation or approval on. Um, you'll notice that when I bring up this page, all of the transactions come up. Uh, sometimes uh, we get some calls of people saying, uh, I've got 15 transactions and I can only see, see nine of them. Well, that's because in, this page is set up 
to where it just shows the first nine transactions. So if you don't see the transaction that you're ready to reconcile, you can either click on the view all, which would show all 16 transactions, or you can scroll to the to use the scroll arrow and see the the last. Um, you basically you can navigate through the charges by using that page or using those buttons. So when the transaction comes up, you'll notice this transaction has should have the the date that the transaction would ma was made, the merchant. So some of the suppliers will include in their merchant name um, the, their the order number that was uh, that was done as part of when you place the order. Um, you'll see that the, the status comes in in a stage status. So if you're a reconciler, when you hit this drop down, you'll only see staged and verified. You won't be able to approve transactions yourself. Uh, and if you're an approver, you'll be able to, to change it from verified to approved. I'm a, uh, or if you need to send it back to the cardholder as an approver, you could set it back from verified back to staged in case they forgot an attachment or, or forgot to code it properly. You see the amount of the transaction, and then this is a description of the transaction. Um, this you can put in this uh, in this field, for example, um, exactly what was purchased. And most of the time, you will, of course, well, you'll always have a packing slip or always have some type of receipt that goes along with this transaction. And so you're going to want to put in that description what is being purchased. If you need to take it, and I'm going to show you in a minute how to take a transaction and split it so that it covers um, if you bought multiple things um, for uh, uh, that are on this one charge. I'll go through that process, how to split a transaction in just a second. But um, So you have the charge, and I'm just going to take a look at this. Um, we're going to do this $13 Office Depot charge. Um, so if I want to um, go down and if I want to add an attachment to this transaction, a scanned copy of my receipt, I'll select that line with the checkbox and then click on the bubble, which is the comments bubble. Again, I'll put in some comments, for example, receipts attached. And then I just click on attach and go out and browse for a copy of my receipt that I've scanned. Now one thing to keep in mind, when you are scanning your packing slips or your, um, your receipts, you will want to save them as either JPEGs or PDFs. So please don't, um, don't scan your, your receipts in a, in a bitmap or a TIFF format because those are, uh, those are very large, uh, they create large file sizes that take up a lot of, uh, of needed space on the server. So again, please, uh, when you scan your receipts, do them as a PDF version or a JPEG version. So you take a copy of that receipt, the scanned copy of the receipt, and then you just upload the transaction into the system. Okay. Some of the organizations are working uh, differently as far as how the documentation that you want to put with your uh, transaction. You're always going to want to uh, to sign the receipt, you know, verifying that you um, that you actually received it. Uh, so you'll sign off the receipt, scan it, and then um, and then upload it into the system. And then you just click on OK. Once you've uploaded it in, you'll see the name of the attachment. And once you've added a comment, uh, you'll notice that the that this bubble, this comments bubble, has dots in it, and that just means that there is a comment um, on this line. Also, if you wanted to take this transaction and, and now you want to go into the distributions and code it against the budget. So you click on the distribution link, which is the, this piece of paper with the three arrows coming out of it. And if you hover over that button, it'll say distribution. Click on that link. And it will bring up the, the list of budget combinations that are set up for your uh, particular card. So hopefully the, the, the department uh, and the, the program and the funds that come in are your most common, um, common set of chart fields. However, some of you may have speed charts that are set up for your cards, or, and you'll notice a lot of the transactions, this account that defaults in is 626001. That is not a, a budgetary account, so that is an account that will typically always, that will always need to be changed from 
uh, from this account to the actual account that it needs to go against the budget. So for example, if, if my fund and department, fund source and program and all of these chart fields were all correct and I just needed to change this against the, uh, to a different uh, operating account, I can do a partial lookup. So if I type in like 614, for example, and then do the lookup, it will narrow it down to all of the all of the accounts that begin with 614. And I'm just going to pick 614003, select that transaction. And I, of course, have the ability, some of you have to split out transactions across multiple departments. Uh, again, you could, you, you just, if I needed to split this out, I could do it as a percentage, um, you know, change it to 50%, and then click on the plus button, and it'll add the number of rows. It will copy down the chart fields from above, and, uh, and then you just modify the, the second or third distribution line that you need. So once you've coded those transactions, then you just say OK. And so that for this particular transaction, now that I've attached it and I've added a receipt, excuse me, I've added a, uh, the receipt and I've coded it, and I want to put in what it is, for example, maybe these were pins. I then change the status from stage to verified and click on save. Now you'll notice that this transaction is in a budget status of not checked. So any transaction that is set to verified or approved will run through a batch budget checking each night. So you do not have to run the validate budget process on all of your transactions, it, um, but if you set them to verified, if they're in a verified or approved status, they'll run in batch. However, if you needed to, to get it done immediately and you wanted to see if this was a valid budget combination, then you can have that line selected and click on the validate budget process. I will tell you that it typically takes about 45 seconds for that process to, to, to run for each PCAR transaction. So, um, you can select several of them at a time and run the validate budget process on them. However, that could take some time. So we recommend you get them to a verified or approved status and then um, allow the batch process at night to, to run the, the budget checking status on them. Um, if you ever see a budget status of error, that simply means that there is a, that budget combination that you used is not a valid budget combination. For example, the the fund and the program may not match or they're um, something that's not a valid combination. So it doesn't validate that there are funds available um, in the budget. It just makes sure that what is entered on those distributions are a, are a valid combination. Okay. So, and then if you come, come back now and I click back on my search page, you'll notice that my search criteria is still there and I've got a statement status of stage now and I click on OK again, then that transaction that I just set to verified, of course, would not come back in on the page. And it will, the, the, the search results will have reduced from 16 to 15 as I go through them. Okay. So before I go through how to split out a transaction, um, and I also will talk about how to take a transaction and split it and link it to a purchase order, uh, are there any questions on uh, adding attachments or um, the, we won't be able to get into specific questions around your budget combinations or anything like that. Um, and some of, the, some of my responses might be you would need to check with your procurement department. Uh, on your on who who's going to code and who's going to do attachments and things like that. But let me see if I can. I'll go through the questions real quick. Okay. One of the first questions is if I used my P card to purchase an order for another department, what employee ID and name uh, shall I put? Mine or the other department personnel? Okay. So the the, the transaction is going to be underneath the cardholder's employee ID. So it, the system doesn't, so that transaction is linked to, to whoever's card is set up. And then if it's going to be charged to another department, then you could put who that person was in the comments and, and then of course 
code it to their department if it needs to go against their budget. And the other question was, do we need to scan a receipt in a packing slip to attach the reconcile statement? Yes, typically um, the, the receipt and the packing slip are the same thing, but what you're going to want to attach is whatever has what was purchased and then um, and, and has that total amount on that transaction. And then the question is says, if I'm a P card holder, do I only select staged or also verified? Okay, so the transactions come in in a staged status automatically every night. So when you have done your attachments, then in your in your budget coding, if, if you're going to be responsible for coding the budget, then you will change them from staged to verified so that they move through the process. And then one of the questions is how detailed does the description need to be if the receipt includes it? Well, one thing is we cannot uh, query against um, scanned copy of receipt. So you're going to want to put in a, a, a it doesn't need to be exactly like a red ballpoint pen, you know, three millimeter, but it can be, um, uh, you know, ballpoint pens as the description. Next question is, does the comments and attachments need to be added in a certain place in order for the comments and attachments to be attached continuously? Well, the com you attach you put the attachments on the line that they're that they're for. So as you as you're working on an individual transaction, you'll put the attachment on that particular line. If you had a transaction and you wanted to split it across, let's say you know uh, you had a you had a charge for for the product and then the installation, and you wanted to split that out. You, you don't need to put the copy of the receipt on the on the second line for the installation. You could you just put the receipt on the first line, and I'll go through splitting out here in just a minute. But um, the comments and attachments go on in the comments bubble for that particular transaction. And yes, one next question is: Do we does every order need a scanned receipt and packing slip? Yes, you have to have a you have to have every. Every order has to have a, a, a signed packing slip or receipt. Next question is, can we make a copy of our finished recon reconcilement for our files? Um, you can do that. Um, if you wanted, for example, to, to do a, a view all for all of your transactions, you could do a view all. Um, and then you can also, and you can click on this download button uh, of all of your transactions. Now you will still get a copy of your statement. You know the the bank is still going to provide you with a copy of a statement. But if you if you just wanted to to download all of the transactions and have them in an Excel file, uh, you can just pull them all up and then click on this download, and it will pop it out to uh, to Excel for you, where you could save a copy of it. Now it won't uh, it won't include in this all of your attachments and things like that, but it will it'll just show you all of the transactions and the amounts and the merchant for each one of them. But again, you still will get a copy of your statement. And again, just to do that, all I did was click on this download button, which ran them out to Excel. And Don, you had a question about your books, um, about ordering books in each title. I wouldn't say that you would need to to put every title um, of every book. I would just, if they're, um, you know, I would just basically say, you know, books. I don't, I don't think you need to get down to the level of every single title on the book. But you might want to check with your uh, procurement department about how detailed um, this needs to come over. So every um, um, every um, so 
sorry, I was reading something else. Every uh, description that you put on that line ends up showing as a voucher line over an accounts payable. Okay, so um, that it really is going to depend on how level, how much level of detail you need over you need in accounts payable and um, and seeing everything. So you might want to check with your um, with your purchasing department to see how what level of detail they really want in there. And Laurel, you were asking a question about if the download button shows the chart field distributions. I'm going to show you how to run a query. Um, some of you might be familiar with query, some of you might not, and I'll show you how to run a query to, to download all of your transactions and where they're coded against the budget. Um, once I get all of these, uh, these transactions coded, I'll go out and run the query that shows you all of your transactions and where they're coded against the budget. And query is just a reporting tool of PeopleSoft. And Gwen, you had a question about are we reconciling the whole bank statement or, or just line by line or as we get them or the transactions come in. Basically, the way, you know, you, you will have to reconcile every individual charge. So for each, what the, you know, what our, what SPD's uh, audit group, PCARD audit group does is they basically go out and reconcile uh, they, you know, they audit individual transactions, so they're going to they're going to want to see a receipt and a packing slip, um, or a, a packing slip for each transaction that came in, someone that was, and what that entailed. Uh, so you can't just put your statement and attach it to the transaction. You've got to have a scanned attachments for each one of the transactions. That basically that backup for that, and you can work these. You know, basically, you should be done uh, a few days after the end of your statement cycle. Um, you, but you, those transactions are going to come in, so it's a good idea to stay on. Especially if you're somebody that does a lot of PCAR transactions, you stay on top of your transactions throughout the month. So you know, maybe set a goal that you're going to go in there at least um, you know once a week to go in and work those transactions and and work the past week's worth of ones that are loaded in, so that you don't have to do them all. Um, because that's really where you'll catch, you know, any type of potential duplicate charges that have happened or um, on your P-card statement. Okay. So that looks like all of the questions that have come in uh, for right now. So I will, um, the, um, and Kathy, we're going to talk about accounts payable in a different meeting um, than the um, than this one. This one's really for reconcilers and approvers. All right. So let's say that you had a transaction that you wanted to to take and split out into two different uh, two t two different uh, line descriptions. So if I wanted to take this Office Depot order, I can select that charge. And take the charge, and then down at the bottom, you'll notice that there is a split line. So if I click on split line, a window pops up. And let's just say that I had, um, I wanted, these were some gel pens. And I spent $45 in gel pens. I enter the billing amount of $45 and click on the plus button. And then it, and then it, copies that description down to the second line, and let's just say that this is binders. I then have this, it's, and I spent $50.20. So you can continue to split out this transaction, and then you click on OK. It will take that 9520 charge now, and you'll notice that it's split it out in the two lines. I then can just come and put my attachment on the first line for that particular transaction. And but if I wanted to take both of these lines and code them to the same um, same distributions, I can select. I can have both lines selected, and down at the bottom, I can click on this distribution template. And then I just code the budget combinations for that particular uh, that's going to cover both of those lines and click OK, and it'll copy whatever I key in here down to both lines. 
and I don't have all of the budget combinations uh, to use on this order, but it would basically, this distribution template is where you can key in your chart field combinations and it will apply those combinations to both of the, all of the lines that I have selected. Okay, so that way you don't have to code line by line by line, you can select multiple ones that are going to have the same combinations and, and code those all at one time. But again, you don't need to go into each individual line uh, because this was the same transaction. You don't need to go into each individual line and put, put a comment or an attachment. You just want to put it on the first one, uh, the first line of uh, the transaction that you had. Yeah, and so someone said, so basically we could have the entire statement reconciled before you get, before you get your monthly statement, and yes, that's true. You could, you could be working on it uh, during the month and, and passing those transactions on to your approver uh, before you get your final statement. And Jim, your question is, why are we putting in coding on the back end if we are putting it on the front end as well? Um, I think you're saying if you're doing a, a requisition that will become a purchase order. Um, the next scenario that I'm going to go through is how to take a transaction and link it to a purchase order so that you don't have to, you don't have to code the transaction. So this Office Depot order that I've gone through, these would basically be, for example, a a face-to-face -face transaction where a purchase order was not issued for that charge. That's why you'd have to key the, the chart fields for these particular orders. But I'm going to go through in the next exercise um, how, to take a, how, how to take this charge for staples and split it out and link it to a purchase order. And uh, let's see, Mrs. Birdshaw, you were asking about what goes in each uh, distribution um, field. You'll need to talk to your purchasing department to see if you're going to be the one coding against the budget. Um, some organizations are set up where the reconcilers know their budgets and where they're supposed to go, uh, but then some are doing it, um, have someone that's going to, to do that task. So um, the, you'll just need to check with your purchasing department to see. Some, some, some people give their group like a cheat sheet of here's some of the most common combinations for your department. So, uh, you'll have to check with your purchasing department on who's going to do your budget coding. And Laurel, your question was if you split a transaction in error somehow, is it possible to undo? Um, you can, if you have not saved this page, then you can come back and do a search. So for example, I've not hit uh, save yet, I don't think. I can hit search and it'll ask me um, if I want to come back. I can say, uh, if I click on no here, it'll throw, um, I'm sorry, if I say yes, it'll come back to the search page. But if I have, um, if I've already saved it, then you can't undo a split, okay? So, um, but it, it's not going to matter overall in the, in, the, in, in the total amount. It's just going to, so that went back. But if I had saved it, then there's not a, there's not a way to combine lines once they've been, once they've been split out and saved. And um, let's see, there's another question. If, I, if, I, if my one order has 20 individual lines, do we need to list each item in the statement? Um, you don't have to go down to the individual um, line item. You can group things together if they're going to have the same budget combination and they're, and they're at a high level similar things. Um, the, you know, you're not required per SPD to go in and break down every single item on your order. They really look at spend more at a, at, at a, at a higher level.
Gwen, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna let you stay on once we once we get through the reconciliation and approval um, step. I'll go on and I'll I'll let you ask your question about um, at the statement level. You're you're approving at a at a line by line basis, and then each month you're gonna make sure that your all your charges add up to um, what you uh, what you've set to uh, verified. This is your own card. You're not gonna be able to approve it, but your you're, you, there's a query to run that shows you all of the transactions for the entire statement. So the question is says, uh, and I've answered the item about breaking down items. Um, our, another question is, are PO, why are POs being created for items being paid for the P card? It's so that we can gather spend. Uh, we can gather um, spend off of statewide contracts. So the the whys and the hows of that are, you know, that's how purchase orders is how SPD gathers spend. And before when transactions were being made on a P card, we're not we do not know what's being purchased. And so um, part of this entire project was to do uh, POs for statewide contracted items, even if you pay with a P card. Um, and if you can't log in to the reconcile um, P card reconciliation site, um, you need to um, contact first your purchasing department to see if they set you up with a user ID that should have already been provided to you if you've taken your training class for this. Um, so Min Su, if you need to um, contact your purchasing department and find out what your user ID is, if you're locked out, um, then they can give you the number for SAO to get your user ID uh, unlocked. So again, we're talking about reconciliation and approval. All right, so the next, um, the next exercise that I want to go through and show you and there there's a quick reference guide for this as well so if you go back out to the the quick reference guides for Team Georgia Marketplace there is a a guide for how to link a PO a PO line to a P card transaction so if you are ordering off a statewide contract and and purchase orders are being issued and it's charging a P card the, when a purchase order gets created and budget checked, it it encumbers funds against the budget. So it sets up, it reserves money against the budget based off of that PO encumbrance. And the way to liquidate that purchase order is through a PO voucher that is created from these P card transactions. So the transactions that were paid with a P card have to be linked to a PO line so that when the, the voucher gets created to pay for them, they liquidate or, or they move that money from being encumbered to being expensed. Okay, so I know that gets into some accounting that most, a lot of you may not may not care about or understand, but uh, basically um, if, if purchase orders are being issued um, for statewide contracted items and P cards being used, then these transactions that come in have to be uh, linked to the PO and the PO line. So when you get a packing slip, for example, from um, Office Max, Staples, Granger, uh, Fisher, and a purchase order has been issued, on that packing slip, you should see, and I, this is one for another agency, and I'm just going to pull it up real quick. And some of you may have already seen this already. The merchant will provide the PO number in the um, on the packing slip. There's a slight delay on this, but so the when the packing slip comes in, it's going to include. The packing, the the PO number, and 
if they have shipped that particular line or not. Okay, so for example, this is the on staple on the staples packing slip. There's the purchase order number, which is the business unit period, and the ten-digit PO ID. And then they will list out all of the lines that are on that PO and whether or not and it's been this is quantity ordered, quantity shipped, and if there was a back order amount or not. And then of course the the, the amount for each one of those particular lines. So if you're taking if you take a charge, so if it is a if it is an order, so for example, if this PO was for 275.47 and Staples shipped everything complete and the charge was 275.47, then the transaction when it comes up on your reconcile statement page, it would already be split out across all of those PO lines and automatically linked to those the PO and the line. So and it, and right now most of the time there are it's about 75 percent um, to where they're they're shipping the entire amount and charging the the full amount of the PO and you don't have to you don't have to link those transactions to the PO and the PO line because they're already linked for you in the system. However, if there's a if they charge more or they charge less or they back order, then you have to go in and manually split out the transaction and link it to the PO line. So for example, if I wanted to take this first charge and I needed to split it out across my PO lines, I simply click on the transaction and do exactly like I did before where I split out the lines. So for example, if I wanted to put in this first line was paper and it was, you know, and then this again this is based off of my packing slip and it was $150 and my next line was toner and it was $300 and then I ended up having um, let's just say some binders for 141.56 and then I click OK. So it will have taken that charge and split it out across my, P, uh, uh, split it out by the amounts how I wanted it to and then to link it to the individual PO, I have that line selected, I click on the purchase details and I link that line to the PO and the line number. And so I'll do a lookup for the PO ID and you'll see all your POs that are out there. You just select the PO and then you select the line. So for example this would have been line one. And that's all you have to put in and you click OK. And then you go to the second line. And what you'll notice is when you have linked the PO in the line that the budget status goes to valid and if I click on the, the distribution, the chart field distributions, they're grayed out and they've copied from the purchase order. So Jim, were you asking before about if it's been coded before, it will it pulls the, the chart field combinations or the distributions from the purchase order and automatically apply it to the to the PCAR transaction so you don't have to rekey it. And then you just go down to the second line click on the purchase details click the PO number and then pick the line and it's real important that you also pick the line this is in the quick reference guide for this as well but if you don't pick the line you'll notice that it'll like it'll split out it'll, it'll prorate all of the 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 amounts across all of the PO lines. So it's real important that you pick the PO ID and the line number. And so you just work your way down those lines. And then if I wanted to, if I was done coding this trend all all lines, all of this transaction, I can just select them all. Of course I'm still will put in my packing slip on the first line. And then down at the bottom I can just click on verify. And that'll set those three transactions that I have selected to verified. And then I just click on save.
So that process, that is probably the most difficult um, piece about doing P-card reconciliation. It does take some practice to do that. Once you go through it a few times, uh, you'll understand it. Again, uh, you go through your quick reference guide, the quick reference guide on how to do that, and walks you through it. Um, again, you could watch this video again, um, or the, this webinar again, to, to see how to do it as well. Um, and then if, you know, if that doesn't work, then um, someone from our help desk can, can help you with doing that process. Again, most of the time, uh, your transactions are already going to be linked if there is a PO, um, but there are some instances where uh, you'll have to manually do that reconciliation. So are there any questions on, uh, on how to do it? Uh, we, you know, we're not really going to get into why and all of that again because that's uh, just part of the project on on how to capture spend for P card, uh, excuse me for uh, statewide contract spend, and um, and even if a P card is used. One of the questions: If if someone makes a mistake, um, can I clear these through the query? Um, if you're a if you're an approver uh, for that particular card holder, which uh, some people in the central office, you would be an approver for everybody and be able to modify their transactions up. You can go into the query and, and make a change. You, you run the query and I'll show you how to do that. You can pull up the transaction and make a change to it if they, if they do it incorrectly. And yes, I am going to send this link to the webinar. So everyone that got the invitation, um, to attend the webinar and then everyone that is that registered so some of you are in a room with uh, with four or five people it's going to go to whoever attended and whoever got invited so um, hopefully it'll get spread out to everyone uh, that way um, Kathy you had a question about a, a a box check that says taxes paid. Uh, what is that box for? Um, you should never be getting charged taxes uh, for things, and that just is a it's an accounting. Uh, it's a check box that if that was not unchecked and there happened to be tax uh, for one reason or another, the system would code it to a different GL account. But again, we have that check so that the taxes get included in the uh, amount of the line. But again, you should not be paying, of course, taxes for that. That's just a configuration step and it should be left alone. Um, Gwen, you had a question about at, at if when you first look at a transaction to be able to, to see if it was against a PO or not. Um, from the transaction, uh, from this first page, you cannot see the purchase order number for this. Um, what you will see is if you are on this page, for your statewide contracted vendors, and, and I didn't have an example of this from, from y'all's business unit yet because some of these transactions were made uh, before we actually went live, but there is this link called line details. If you click on that, in this customer code field um, on this page, that is where they will put your business unit period and the 10 digit PO number in that field. And then they'll provide down in this uh, type seven they'll show you um, everything that was included in on that order. Okay, So you can't see from this page whether or not it's a PO or not, um, but the, all of our statewide contracted vendors provide the business unit and the PO ID on that line details page. Uh, Christina, you had a question about when you do an order um, and you get multiple receipts, you'll still be able to um, to take those transactions and split them out however you received uh, shipment. So you can take a transaction and be able to split it out as many times as you need to uh, based off of how your shipments work. So we see that all the time. 
One question is, would some, will AP person have the ability to correct the coding? Yes, they will have that ability. As long as you, as a PCARD administrator, have set up your AP people to have access to be approvers um, on, the, on the card holders, then they'll be able to go in and make modifications to the budget combinations. So again, you just set them up. They don't have to change the statuses, but they can go in, run the query, if they see things coded incorrectly, then they can go pull up that transaction and, and code it. And Julie had a question about how do you add a merchant so you can process the charge on the P card. Um, I'm not exactly clear of that statement. I mean, a lot of the, you know, we see, we see charges. They don't have to be POs for those particular uh, charges. They would just be a, this, this merchant is actually comes from the file. So it comes from the bank, whoever, whoever charged the card comes in. Uh, Laura, you had a question about disputes. Yeah, I was going to go over that, but I'll do that now. Uh, since I've gone through that. So if you have a charge come in and it's in dispute and what the way that you can you can take a transaction and you you still have to you know even if things were in dispute you still have to pay the bank for those. So you still have to go through um, coding that and paying for that uh, but you you do your dispute with the merchant and meaning that you're, you're expecting a credit back for that particular um, problem that you've had. So let's just say that this order for 4.16.82 was in dispute. Basically you can select, you just select that line and on the billing tab you just put in what, you put in the dispute amount. And that's not going to, that's not going to, you know, send the, the dispute to the merchant or anything like that. It's just a way for you to track um, that you that this transaction is under dispute. So if you put in the dispute amount in this field and then you click on save, you can come back over. You have a menu over on the left hand side called review disputes. So and I, I need to make sure I've got just theirs. But if you, I click on review disputes and I do it by employee. then it will list out everything that I currently have in dispute or that I'm waiting on you know, some type of action to be had. I can put in comments when I get the credit. You know, if I wanted to say, yeah, I got the credit on the December or the January statement or whatever, but once you get that credit and you're taking it out, out of dispute or you, it's been resolved, then you simply just say you click on collected and save it. And then that takes that amount out of dispute. So it doesn't, again, there's no there's no notification to um, to it to the merchant or anything like that as far as what's been put in dispute in the system. You just you just mark that line in dispute by the amount, and that's how you can track um, of what you had in dispute. And then you just come and kind of clean up this list under review disputes of what you're waiting to get a credit for. Um, and then you had a question, someone was asking if you, how do you search for if something, how do you search for the PO? Um, again, your packing slip should have the PO number on it when it comes. If, if, uh, if you know your requisition for what was originally, um, for the original requisition for when the request was made, you can come back out to your um, e-procurement and under manage requisitions, and, and find your requisition and then it will have, I don't, I'm not sure if we've got it in here, but there will be a link next to, in, the, in the chain that says purchase order and you can get your, your purchase order number that was for that particular requisition. So that, again, that, that's something that's covered in the, in the requisition class, but um, 
so you see you, you, you can find the PO number that's related to the request that was made. And when you were asking if you had to receive every um, PCARD, PO, and PeopleSoft, uh, the system does not require a, a receipt for every PO if it's paid with PCARD. So your reconciliation is basically confirmation that, um, that you received the goods. The, when the voucher gets created, it's not going to be based off of the uh, any kind of receipt. It's going to be based off of the, the PCARD transaction. So, so in the system, you do not have to receive uh, POs that are paid with PCARD because you will be um, doing a reconciliation on those transactions instead. Kathy Webb, let's talk about your process um, offline later today for your question on um, if everything has to go through a, a PO or not. So things that were paid for outside of the marketplace. So again, SPD uh, only requires um, a purchase order for, for things off a statewide contract. And um, so if you are just able to go, for example, I know um, some of you, you know, you might go to uh, a store and buy something, then the, a PO is not required for that. Um, as far as if your agency is doing a PO for every one of your transactions, um, that's where you'll, you would need to talk to your procurement office about that. So SPD only requires, only requires a PO for all statewide contract purchases card or not. Okay, so I am going to now go and add, um, so basically that is the process for doing um, PCARD uh, reconciliation. If you're an approver, and so your responsibility is to go and approve PCAR transactions, um, there is a pagelet that you can add to your home page. So if I click back on, um, on home, and go under content. I then have a page that called PCARD Verified Charges. So those transactions that I have moved from stage to verified, if I click on this, I'm going to take off my PCARD stage charges and just have my PCARD Verified Charges. So I'm going to collect the, select the PCARD Verified Charges, click on the Personalized Layout, and then I'm going to take this from the left column Again, some of you, you, everyone defaults to two columns. Again, you will change that to be three columns. Take the left-hand column and then move it over to the right column and click on Save. And so now those transactions that I have moved from stage to verified move off of the, the PCARD stage um, charges to the, the PCARD verified charges. And so if I'm an approver and I want to um, take those transactions and I'm ready to approve those transactions, then I come back, same exact navigation as a reconciler. I come to e-procurement. Procurement Card Center.
and under reconcile, reconcile statement. And then I will narrow down the list of transactions to, I'll, I'll, I can choose this card issue or visa. I'm going to go ahead and just put in the employee ID. And then I just want to see statement status of things that are verified. And then, and just for this particular billing date. And I click on search. Again, I can go through these transactions as an approver, make sure there's an attachment on each one of them. I kind of skipped that process before, but there should be an attachment for, for this particular uh, transaction. And I can do, a, for example, at once I've gone through and looked at all of those transactions, I can do a select all. Hopefully at this time, the, the batch process at night has run to validate the budget on all of these. And so I just select them, and then I click on, um, I click on approve and it'll change them from verified to approved. I then just click on save. So an approver basically is coming in, making sure these are approved charges, opening up. If I wanted to view the, the attachments, I can click on the comment bubble and then click on view and then it should, it'll launch a copy of the, of the receipt. So the intent is that uh, you're doing less um, you know, routing of paper and able to do this in the system. And so then we had the question about, um, about how, to, how to see a list of basically all of the transactions. So um, PeopleSoft has a tool called Query where you can run basically reports out of the system for a particular, to see a, a list or a report of transactions. So from, if I am in, um, I come back over to my home page or back to the menu, and I come down, I go underneath Reporting Tools, Query, and Query Manager. All of the P card queries begin with 0P0201. I'm scared, 020. And then I can click on search. And I'm going to say, I've got hundreds of different ones, but you'll see 0P0201, 202, 203, things like that under there. The one that you're going to use is called, um, is this 0P0201. Two hundred one B underscore P card underscore status by BU underscore detail DET. Okay, so you this is just how to run a report, and you can select that. And if you want to run it out to Excel, it's going to prompt you for your business unit and what's called the the statement end date, the from date, and end date. Okay. So for example, if I wanted to see all of the transactions for my organization, I put in the business unit. My statement date that I want to look at for right now is 1227. The from and to date are actually the same because there's I'm just looking at one period. And then if I want to see all transactions, I just put in a wild card and click on view results. And that's going to open it up in in Excel. And basically these are all of the transactions that are in this test environment. And I can, I can look and see, you'll notice that these are all of the transactions. Their current status, which ones are staged, which ones are approved. Uh, if there's a dispute amount like we did before. This transaction number is a great number to use if you want to pull up an individual transaction. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Like if you, uh, also it's going to show you the merchant. It's going to show you the card holder, the last uh, five digits of the card number, and then where it's currently coded. So these are all the budget combinations that are for that transaction. Shows you who last modified the, the transaction, gives you their email address. This is the default ship to that we put on each one of the cards. It shows you who approved the transaction and the date that, they, that it got set to approved. You've got the transaction date, and then when, when I link those transactions to a PO, it shows me the PO number, the line number that it was against, and then the current budget status, and then, of course, that description that was in there.
So if I see a transaction, for example, you were asking earlier, let's say that this had the wrong account code on it, and they, or they, they approved something and it was still in the 626001 account, I can take, I can, from Excel, I can copy just that transaction number, come back over to my reconcile statement page, and from the search page, I can just paste in that long transaction number and click on search, and that will pull up just that one individual transaction. And if I needed to change the, the coding on it, I just click on the distributions and modify them. So that this 201B query, when you run this out, so if, if I ran this in production now for the December 27th statement, because that's already closed, the sum of this column, of this amount column, will, um, will equal the, um, the entire amount of the statement, or it should. And you're going to want to make sure that, um, that all of the transactions get to be in an approved and this budget status is valid. Again, the, our test environment, we don't have the budget checking running in batch or whatever, but any, any transactions that's verified or approved will run through the budget validation process and this will either go to valid or error if there is an error on it. Um, Gwen, you were asking about the process statements menu on the screen. Um, I have that. Um, no one else. No one else has the. Uh, they might have the budget chart field validation screen to be able to run ba uh, budget validation, but um, I have that just because I'm logged in as a uh, because I'm an administrator. Um, and Paige, you had a question about um, if someone placed a PCAR transaction in December and you didn't create a card, how should it be handled now? Um, you do not have to go back and issue a PO for transactions that have already come through. You can just code those to where they need to go against the budget. And uh, Gwen, yeah, I was just doing demonstrations, but approvers really need to, you should only approve transactions where the budget status is valid. But everybody has a different process of who's going to be coding the budgets. And then Laurel, you were asking about um, the NIGP codes. Yes, those are only going to pull for the ones that are linked to a purchase order. So it'll, if the transaction line is linked to a PO, then it will go get the NIGP code from the PO and display that in the query. Are there any other questions on doing um, PCARD reconciliation and approval? Um, one of the questions said, wanted me to repeat my response about the, the, who the, I guess you're asking, what was your response to page to the P card debt or to the P card holder? The transactions are under the card holder.
And then Gwen, you were asking for an emergency. Would a statewide contract vendor accept a manual order without a PO? I would imagine they would. Um, they're, they're in violation of what they've agreed to in their contract. Um, you can always go back and do an get an exemption, but uh, any order is really supposed to go through Team Georgia Marketplace. Okay. Well, that looks like that's the last question. Again, I will um, I'll record this webinar and send it out to everyone that registered and everyone that got an invitation. So if there's anyone in your organization that uh, uh, needs to get a copy of this, feel free to pass it on. And uh, thanks for your time today.